So today we'd like to talk about reaching out to others. And it starts from the point of birth. We reach out to our little ones, but that Allah has made the heart in such a way that there is an automatic connection between you and your child. Automatic. It would require a person whose qualities are far away from humanity to hate their own children at the point of birth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Because nature, Allah has placed within your heart a connection. And that connection would obviously lead to you loving that child. We find children very cute. If Allah wanted, he could have made children such that they were not cute. Perhaps they became cuter later on. But children are cuter than adults. Would you not agree? And that is something amazing. It's a gift of Allah. You look at a child who's not even yours. And the mere fact that those innocent eyes look at you, immediately it brings joy to the heart. That is the plan of Allah. What will you do as a result? We have children. Do we just spoil them in the name of love? And do we just give them as they want, what they want? If that's the case, we fail our test. But we give them through the love that which will be beneficial for them by the help of Allah, through the guidelines set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, given by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is important for me to understand the interaction that Allah has kept the interaction that he has kept for survival with other human beings. If I were to ask you a question, who provides for you? Your answer would be Allah. Who gives you? Who sustains you? Allah. But remember, Allah's plan is such that he uses other human beings to be a means for something to get to you. Let me give you one example. You want to earn. You have a qualification, for example. Can you just sit at home and think to yourself, Allah will provide? Can you do that? You need to get up and apply for a job. You need to get up and do something. When you apply for a job, what will happen? Someone will call you for an interview. Someone, a human being. So you cannot say, look, this person is not providing for me, so I don't need to talk to them properly. You need to go and you need to show them your skill in order to prove to them that you are deserving of that post. Because if there are 20 people, 50 people vying for the same post, you will not get the job unless you happen to be a person who is outstanding somewhat, somehow. And then you get the job. So you go out, you have to show them what you have. This is not an ibadah in the sense that we are not showing them an act of worship. But we are showing them a skill that we have in order to prove that we are deserving of what we are asking for. That was the plan of Allah. So you got the skill, you went out, you had to make an effort, then every day you have to get to work at a time that was already fixed. So it's either 9 to 3 if you're very lucky or 8 to 5 if you're still a little bit lower down the ladder. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Why I say this is because our children also need our time. And we ask Allah to help us such that as we progress and become older, we have more time with our family rather than the other way around. So if you get your job, you will need to mix with people. You need to interact. You have your mobile phone. When you phone, you talk to someone. How you talk is reaching out to them. How you interact is reaching out to them. What is your duty? Your duty is to live by the example of Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is your duty. That is my duty. Sometimes we know his example, but we become oblivious of it. For some reason, we throw it at the back of our minds and we lead a life thinking we are good Muslims and that's it, without implementing what we've learned. Sometimes when we go to universities, we learn so much for so many years. But how much will you actually implement when you get your job? It's a small percentage of what you've learned. When it comes to Islam, that is not the case. Whatever you learn, you implement. Whatever you know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you put into practice. This is the gift of Allah. And your test is to ask yourself, am I putting more and more into practice as time is passing? Or am I becoming worse? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us ease. So this is why my brothers and sisters to mix and interact has been kept the plan of Allah. How do you mix with others and how do you interact with them? In order to answer that, you need to ask yourself, who do you mix with and who do you interact with? Firstly, as you're growing older, 
When you're a little baby, you don't even know how to speak. And then your parents teach you how to speak or those around you teach you how to speak. From that time, let's put ourselves into the shoes of parents for a moment. It is your duty to touch the lives of your own children in such a beautiful way that they learn manners. They learn good language. If you are to swear and to use foul language, how would you have touched the lives of your own children? In a very dirty way. In a way that when they grow up, they will be even more vulgar than you. Is that called beautiful touching of the lives of your own children? When we say others, you start with your own family. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he instructed him at a certain stage saying, Warn those who are close to you, that circle, the family and the broader family and so on. Ashira, those who are from your kinsmen, your tribe and so on. That was the beginning. It was the first circle. It does not mean that Islam stopped at that. No, it was just a circle to start with. If my inner circle is ideal and good and I've worked on it, I will be able to be more successful with the broader circle. But if I've not worked correctly on the inner circle, then how do I expect to succeed when it comes to the broader people? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So my brothers and sisters, take a careful look at how you talk to your own children, how you interact with them, how much time do you give them? It is important. That is an act of worship. It is an act of worship. Teach them mannerism to begin with through following your example. So sometimes in some homes, there is not much of instruction dished out by the father or the mother. There is more following example. They watch your etiquette and mannerism of eating and they will follow suit. Do you know that? So if you start with Bismillah before you eat and you make it loud and clear, they will also say Bismillah before they eat. Sometimes you did not yet tell them anything, but you touch their lives in a beautiful way. So they just follow. You read your Salah on time. The Adhan goes, everything stops. You touch the lives of your child. They will learn without you instructing them that the time of Adhan, they will give up whatever they are doing and they will come towards the Salah. They will fulfill it. This is why I always say you find a one year old child getting into sujood because mom reads Salah because mom is in sujood. And this is why you find little children wanting to dress like their parents. You know, a lot of us subhanallah on a Friday, we like to dress with a thob, what is known as a kandura. We like to dress with a thob. You find your little children will say, Dad, I want to wear the same thing. I want to wear the same thing. Why? Because they, f they feel automatically a connection to you. How do you touch the lives? Now, to, in order to be able to be the most effective with your children, you need to watch how you are with your spouse. Amazing. Look at the connection. Everything is connected. If I want to be effective with my children, I need to make sure that with my own wife, I am so decent that when my child grows up, he will know how to interact with the opposite sex. He will know what the mother is all about, what a wife is all about. He will know that you have to talk to her with respect. He will know that you are not allowed to scream and yell at your spouse. But if I am such a bad example, I will touch the lives of my children in a negative way, such that when they look at a woman, they think you need to shout, you need to scream. You need to yell or the other way around. Sometimes you find the women yelling and screaming. That's the only thing they know. May Allah not do that to us. May we not be from amongst those. This is why it is an act of worship to be kind and good to your spouse. Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says, and we know the hadith. He says the best from amongst you, the best to your spouse. Those who are the best to his spouse or his or her. If we were to take it the other way around, sometimes we can even add family members to that meaning of that beautiful hadith. So the reason is if you are good within your inner circle, you have contributed towards the positive growth of society and humanity at large. But a person who is hypocritical, he goes out and preaches one thing. And in, in, internally, within his own family, he's a harsh person. He cannot forgive. He cannot overlook. He wants everything as he wants it, when he wants it. If that's, if that's the case, you will not be able to teach your children how to grow and how to live with their own spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. As your child grows and they watch you, let us lay a good example. Let us set that beautiful example.